What's up folks? As you may have seen by the thumbnail or on our social media posts, uh, my dad was able to, to successfully take down a Neil guy. My dad and I uh, just com completed this public hunt at the lower uh, Rio Grande Valley National Wildlife Refuge, the Nanta Tract. This area is about 11 miles uh, west of Raymondville. It's about 4,000 acres of huntable South Texas brush. Uh, you got about, you got three roads uh, running north to south in the property and uh, a northern road running east to west that kind of give you to uh, access to different areas of, of the refuge. Um, it's got some areas that are very, very thick brush and some other areas that are kind of like younger uh, brush. Um, you got some like really cool um, rows of like ebony trees you know they kind of intersect with like more like you know mesquite and grass uh type areas there's actually some hyper saline lakes or some salt lakes uh that may or may not have water uh when you when you're hunting there so that's kind of a neat feature uh, we submitted for this hunt with texas parks and wildlife those drawn hunts uh they start happening or they you start submitting for those in august uh, this particular one had a deadline of october so we drew the national refuge exotic hunt so this was a a rifle hunt and it allowed for you to take a neil guy or feral hogs there is also two other uh national wildlife refuges uh, here in South Texas that do hold Neil Guy, that would be the Laguna at the Scosa and the East Lake. And those also have uh, some public hunt opportunities. So this is actually the third year that my dad and I have been doing um, or started doing public hunts in our third year uh, hunting on different refuges. We've hunted at the Laguna at the Scosa and, and here in Teniente. And this is actually the first successful hunt that we've had. Uh, it's been a, a huge uh, learning curve. Um, you know, if you're just someone that's, you know, grown up just kind of throwing corn down a sendero or uh, just putting corn in a, in a feeder and sitting in a blind and waiting for things to happen, uh, you know, this is a little bit different. You know, there's definitely a, a, a lot to learn, uh, it, a little more difficult. Um, it, so with these refuges, number one is you have limited access with your truck, with your vehicle, right? So there's usually rules on where you can and, and cannot access. So beyond that, you know, it's a lot of walking. Uh, you may be able to ride a bike to kind of, you know, go longer stretches. There's no kind of baiting. Uh, you can't throw corn or, or anything like that. And to be honest with you, the, uh, the Neil guy don't really from what I've heard, they don't really go to the corn. Um, so that wouldn't really help you in this hunt anyways. Uh, but it's just, I mean, really, really wild. Um, not really uh, developed these areas, not a lot of development. And in, in these refuge hunts, there's really little to no assistance, um, you know, that is given to you. I mean, you may meet someone at the hunt uh, and they might be willing to help you, but you need to be prepared to you know to do everything on your own right find the find the places to hunt and if you are successful you need to be prepared to take uh that animal out um so just to talk a little bit about the neil guy so the neil guy is the one of the larger antelope species uh in the world the males can actually get up to 630 pounds or so 650 depending on on who you ask and the females are also large. They can go up to 470 pounds. So they're native to India, but were released uh, into South Texas in the King Ranch in the 1930s. And they've kind of uh, spread into, they're kind of free ranging and spread into different areas of South Texas. Kind of that Northern boundary, uh, like Kingsville area, all the way down to the border. Uh, they haven't really expanded too much westward. Um, they're kind of intolerant to cold, so they're kind of limited um, to that area. They have excellent eyesight, so some say that they actually have um, better eyesight or they, they might have better eyesight than white-tailed deer. Maybe not so much um, 
the they don't have as as good of a scent as, as white-tailed deer, um, but excellent eyesight. So that presents a challenge, um, and they they have really uh, thick skin, like a dermal shield, like kind of like you think of like a hog sometimes. So really thick skin, and so. Uh, you need like a larger uh, caliber rifle uh, if you're going to be hunting these. Um, I mean, you don't have to, but you know, it's, it's kind of recommended. One unique behavior or some unique behaviors with these animals is the females kind of tend to, to um, herd together and the males are, are typically separate, separate. And these animals, they, they kind of, they defecate in dung piles or like community dung piles, if you will. So you'll just be walking along and, and along a road or a trail and you'll just see just a big pile of, of Neogai um, scat. Um, so that, that's a really key um, behavior when, when you're trying to find these animals. So uh, what we drew is it was a four day hunt, again, a, a rifle hunt. The they did allow for three day up to three days of scouting before the hunt started but my dad and i you know just are us both working me having a small child uh just just couldn't find the time to that to take those extra days to do any scouting um so we did a lot of uh, google maps scouting right so just really you know looking at the satellite images on on google maps of the area uh, trying to look for, um, you know, really heavily used trails, um, kind of looking at, uh, you know, intersections or, or choke points where a lot of these trails uh, kind of converge. Uh, you also want to look at areas that are kind of more heavily brushed, bordering areas that are not so heavily brushed. Uh, and those transition points, um, a lot of times we would find animals. Another resource we use is texasbowhunter.com. Uh, there always tends to be forums about these public hunts. And uh, you can ask around on those forums or just read the forums and you can find a lot of really useful information. And the next thing I would say about this is, you know, ask around and try to connect with others that are familiar with these areas that have hunted on these public hunts. I mean, that's an invaluable resource. Like I said, I mean, um, it's just such a different type of hunting, you know? So if you've never done it before, I mean, don't be afraid to ask. I mean, most people are, are willing to kind of give you some tips there. So that first day uh, we went in the dark. Um, we had picked our prime area that we wanted to hunt. Uh, we set up in the middle uh, of, you know, in the dark sun came up uh we sat there till about 9 30 it was very very cold that morning uh well for us south texas folks it was cold and i don't think i was dressed appropriate but it was real cold uh and we didn't see any activity so after that first sit uh we really decided to just walk all of those areas that we had scouted on google maps because one thing is, you know, these satellite images, a lot of times they're, they're not even um, of that year. I mean, they're still really useful and, and that's kind of a good starting place. But yes, the trails are there, but they may not be actively used by those animals. So you got to get boots on the ground and you actually got to look at all these areas. So that first day we ended up walking about 12 miles till uh, in all together in these different areas until we found uh, we bumped some Neil guy and we were able to also find some fresh sign uh, in that area so that's how long it took us just to kind of narrow down um, that area um, we hunted the afternoon and what we thought was a good spot uh, we did see uh, a lot of whitetail uh, turkey armadillos all, all kind of wildlife but but no Neil guy we went back the next day, day two, hunted the morning. Again, sat till about 10 or so. Uh, same deal, whitetail, turkey, uh, no Neil guy. Um, again, we were kind of in this area, this general area. So after that 10 o'clock, we proceeded to kind of walk. Uh, we walked about another four miles, but, 
but kind of tart in that specific area just really trying to find you know the best spot we found more for a sign we found an area that would be just a better place for for us to post up it wasn't really far from our original sit point but um it proved to make uh, all the difference um so the uh, the third day is the first day that we sat in that in that second spot uh and keep in mind guys when i'm saying like like we we set up um, my dad and I have learned, you know, at least for us, when we do these refuge hunts, um, you know, we've tried the pop-up blind, we've tried the ghost blind, we've tried, you know, just canvas, net. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you, you need to be mobile, you know, relatively mobile um, when you're hunting these areas because you can't just you know, just be stuck in one spot, just kind of hoping and praying that, you know, it's gonna come to you. If, if it's not working, if it doesn't seem like a good spot, you gotta be willing to move. So my dad and I, all we had was, um, we each had shooting sticks, we each had a chair, and that's it. Uh, we, uh, where we were sitting, we had a, a very thick tree uh, behind us. Uh, this is the, the, the third morning, the sun was rising, uh, to our backs, um, we had a tree kind of to our left that was that was blocking an area, and uh, about 60 yards in front of us, there was an an, an active uh, dung pile that had some some fresh sign. It was really foggy that morning, uh, so it was, it was a beautiful morning. Um, you know, we we watched the sun come up, kind of the the brush come to life. I'm not gonna lie third day of the hunt, you know, just kind of really easy to start kind of getting uh, drained and, and just mentally fatigued. Um, in this particular moment, I'm not gonna lie, I was playing with my phone and my dad just kind of, he did that that dad hunting move. I don't know if y'all can relate, but just that, that, firm, that firm grasp that just says like, something's going down, something's going down. So I kind of looked over to him and he just kind of mouthed, Neil guy, Neil guy. So I looked to my left just ever so, ever so uh, slowly and through that tree I was telling you on my left, we could see a Neil guy. Uh, it was a young bull and he was just kind of cautiously approaching. Uh, he couldn't see us with that tree. I mean, I mean we're still cautious but it didn't seem like he could, he could see us. And we were just, I mean, crossing our fingers because he was kind of taking his time, smelling stuff, you know. But, I mean, we had that active pile in front of us, so we were, you know, pretty confident that he was walking this way. And sure enough, he did. Um, he started walking very slowly. At this point, he's probably about 150 yards away. Uh, he's walking towards us from, uh, f from our left, to, to our to our right he's he's walking we got the rifle set up on the shooting stick and you know my dad and I we were hunting together and we just kind of both decided that you know whoever has the shot you know just just take the shot you know because there's different angles and stuff you can't always you know time it out perfectly um so I'm waiting for I'm looking down my scope and oh my god this this animal he he's about two steps away from from getting a hurting from my rifle. But uh, I'm looking down the scope and it's just like, plow, my dad, my dad shoots. Um, it ended up being about a 50 yard shot. I mean, this, he, the, the Neil guy reared up. I mean, he looked like he was running super weird. So I turned over to my dad and we were already, you know, like super, super excited. I was like, wow, dad, congrats. You know, did, or, or, you know, like, did, did you hit him? Did you hit him? And he was super confident, like, yeah, yeah, I hit him. And I asked him, okay, well, you know, um, where, did, where did you aim or, or, or what happened? And he's like, well, um, I aim for the neck. And I mean, if you've ever shot an animal in the neck, I mean, most of the time they just drop right there. So right then we just kind of, I started, or we both kind of started questioning it. Well, I mean, he he, he didn't drop, so... Uh, I'm not sure if he hit it. Um, 
so my dad is he's he's a he's a very good marksman you know he's he's a good shot and this was i mean a 50 yard shot um in talking to him after he took the shot i think he really got you know just really worked up that neil guy fever um my dad has been um excited or um interested in these animals ever since uh, he came from Mexico to college in, in Kingsville at Texas A&I. So, you know, he went to school, he went to college right there uh, next to the King Ranch, uh, you know, learning, seeing these Neil guy, learning about these Neil guy. And, you know, he's gotten his whole adult life without ever having an opportunity to, to really, you know, take a good look at one of these animals up close. And, you know, even less to take a shot at one. And he just said that I think he just got too worked up and he actually ended up taking that shot uh, at its neck while it was still walking. Um, I mean, you never know with animals. I kind of felt like the animal, he was still gonna walk in front of us. He had no idea we were here, but I mean, it all happens to us, right? Where we, we, we rush the shot or we get nervous. We take a shot that, that maybe if uh, cooler heads prevailed, we, we wouldn't take that shot. My dad looked, my dad and I both looked, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. We, we gritted the area. There was absolutely no blood. Um, so, you know, my dad was, was devastated. Uh, he just felt like, you know, all that work that, that we had put in, you know, all the buildup to, to really, you know, get to this spot and it just culminated into this, just this perfect opportunity. You couldn't have written it better uh just this perfect opportunity and and for it not to work out so my dad was just just really bummed and uh, i ended up posting that picture on social media and um really appreciate uh, a lot of the really positive and encouraging feedback uh, that we got from people because i think at that point my dad was was kind of done um, i don't think he wanted to hunt anymore uh, i think he just felt sick to his stomach um, we did hunt the afternoon. Uh, we didn't see any animals whatsoever. So it just looked, it looked really bleak. You know, um, it seemed like we had maybe, uh, the area was hot, right? It just, we took the shot. Maybe the animals weren't going to walk out anymore. My dad, I mean, you know, he's in his sixties. He's got aches and pains. Uh, he's tired from all the walking, that emotional stress. I don't even think he had dinner that day. He just, he was just so done. Um, but somehow, you know, we managed to wake up that, that fourth day and we go out there and we've kind of decided that we're just gonna hunt the morning because uh, we both have to work on Monday. And we're walking down the same dirt road that, you know, we walked over and over and over as, as we're going to our, to our stand. Um, and as we're walking, maybe about a quarter mile from, from my truck, uh, in the middle of the dirt road, lay a Neil guy. So at first we were, we were just thinking, I, I guess somebody else shot a Neil guy. But I mean, this thing, it looks just like the one that my dad uh, had taken a shot at. Just about the right size, the right color. And upon closer inspection, sure enough, he does have a bullet wound in his neck and the the bullet had uh it was a little the target he hit a little low so he he missed the spine so it appeared that you know it's just somehow by by some miracle you know the the animal i had died you know during the night and just decided to 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 expire right in the middle of the road i mean like i said guys this is a four thousand acre refuge and for the animal to to just die uh, right in the middle of the road, we never we never would have looked right. We just had assumed that it was a clean miss. There was no blood whatsoever. I mean, I I don't know what you call that, but I mean, it just just something short of a miracle that that it would just lay right there. Um, so yeah, we we were just so excited. You know, we hugged it out. Uh, you know, we talked about. Just, you know, that whole time of the stress and, you know, all the build up to it. Um, 
we went back to the truck and uh, we someone was just arriving and they they were kind enough to lend us their game cart so we were able to um, field dress the Neil guy and uh, take it out on the cart I never used a game cart before again that's kind of like another public land thing with limited access you can't just you know drive your truck up to this huge animal you you gotta take it on a game cart and and pull it that that distance which for us wasn't too bad it was a quarter mile on a dirt road but still i mean uh that that animal ended up weighing about uh 300 pounds of field dressed and just just dragging that thing through that loose sandy dirt um it was it was pretty exhausting but um yeah we had a we had a great hunt. Um, I cannot wait to, uh, you know, to get some of the meat back. My dad is having the animal processed and he's gonna have the, the animal mounted. It's a really special animal for my dad. Like I said, he's been wanting to get one of these Neil guy for a very long time. Uh, it's his first public land animal and it, it's a hunt that, that we shared together. We shared the heartbreak and we shared the elation of it. Um, so that's what hunting is all about, you know, spending time with, with family in the great outdoors. And it's a lot of, um, you know, slow, um, I don't know if you call it boring, but a lot of, a lot of just still sitting, monotony, highlighted, but just some extreme emotions. There's nothing quite like your heart just beating out of your chest when that target animal just, just walks up, um, and, and presents the shot, but um, yeah, guys, just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about our hunt. Uh, if you have any questions about the Texas Parks and Wildlife uh, public hunt, the draw the draw hunt system, you know, I'll be happy to help. Um, I'm not gonna give you guys these exact spots. I actually had some people that were uh, some friends that were kind enough to kind of maybe pinpoint me. Uh, in the right direction so you know I'm not gonna disclose their spots but um, you know still you, you need to look at those maps and everything like that uh, do do your research you know put boots on the ground that's that's the best way to do it uh, we'll be doing um, public hunts again uh, next year um, we really love it um, we haven't looked for a hunting lease these these last few years because we've been so fulfilled with these public hunt opportunities. Um, I'm gonna leave it at that, guys. If you have any questions at all, just let me know. Catch y'all later.